today the whole world is meditating on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ or rather celebrating the resurrection day as Easter and today we are going to hallelujah glory to God not only meditate or celebrate we are going to really experience or enjoy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ meaningfully through his precious word amen praise be to God let's turn to the Acts of the Apostles Hallelujah, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 4 and verse 33. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 4 and verse 33. Hallelujah. There we read about the Apostles of Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God. Witnessing about the res resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4 and verse 33. And with great power, the Apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. The Apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with great power, with great assurance, with great confirmation. Hallelujah, glory to God. And or oh, without any sheer doubt, without any hesitation, without any fear. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory to God. They endorsed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. And we also, who... Hallelujah, glory to God. Believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only believe, saying that Jesus once died, shed his blood, suffered and died and resurrected on the third day, was going to come back. So likely people take uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, whereas there is so much in it that we have to enjoy and to experience in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus... Hallelujah, glory to God, resurrected from the dead. We have to have that assurance. Today we are going to meditate on three points, saying that, um, in the likeness, the three points, uh, saying that uh, likeness of the resurrection, power of resurrection, and hope of resurrection. Likeness of resurrection, where do we see? Hallelujah, glory to God. How can we, with great power, a witness of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Only when you experience it, you can, with great power, with great authority, with great uh, assurance, you can witness about the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, there Apostle, verse 5, there Apostle Paul speaks about the likeness of his resurrection. Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So when, we, when can we be, hallelujah, united in the likeness of his resurrection? Hallelujah. When do we get that uh, likeness of His resurrection, hallelujah, in our lives? When we are, hallelujah, glory to God, united together in the likeness of His death. So, when do we, where, from where do we, when, from where are we resurrected? When do we get resurrected? When we turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And there the Apostle Paul writes so clearly saying that in verse Hallelujah, glory to God. One, he says, You have and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So when when we, we become alive, though we live, we live in sin or live without Christ is as good as dead. So and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So we were dead in trespasses and sins. Jesus Christ through his resurrection power, hallelujah, brought us out of the trespasses and sins. 
Christianity is not to live and continue to live in sin and trespasses, but to continue to continually coming out of sins and trespasses is coming out from the dead. Hallelujah. Or resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. So where, where does it happen? From where? From sin and trespasses we are brought out. Hallelujah. We were dead ones and we are brought out by the power of resurrection and it is likeness of resurrection. And also in verse 5, Hallelujah, glory to God, uh, the word of God in Ephesians 2, 5, he says, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. He says, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive. By the grace of God we are saved. That is salvation. Oh, hallelujah. When we were dead in trespasses and sins, Jesus Christ, through, through his death and resurrection, made us alive, or brought us out from the sin, dead food, uh, the sins and trespasses which put us in death. He brought us out of such death. Hallelujah. By the grace we are saved. And not only that, how do we get that grace? The word of God says, verse 6, Ephesians 2, 6, And he raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places. Verse 8, For by grace you have been saved, by grace we have saved, through faith. Hallelujah. By grace you have been saved through faith on the Hallelujah, work of the Lord in Christ Jesus through his death and through his resurrection. So we are united together in Christ in the likeness of his death and in the likeness of his resurrection. When we come back to Romans chapter 6 from 1 onwards, oh hallelujah, we are in through baptism, immersion baptism, by believing in the work of the Lord. By believing in the work of the Lord, hallelujah, by the resurrection power, resurrection work of the Lord in Jesus Christ, uh, God's work in Christ Jesus Christ, by believing it, when we are, uh, that's what in Romans 10, 9 and 10 states like this, hallelujah, glory to God, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, believe in your heart, where do we apostles witnessed about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ with great power and great grace was upon them. We are to witness the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ right within us, right within our hearts. We have to believe in the heart that God raised Jesus Christ, hallelujah, glory to God, from the dead. If we believe with great power, hallelujah, if you only witness the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection work of God in, in our Lord Jesus Christ, then, hallelujah, glory to God, great grace will be upon us. And then, hallelujah, through this faith and through this grace, we are saved. Amen. So, hallelujah, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. With the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the confession, no confession is made unto salvation. So believing with all our hearts the power of God by resurrecting Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we confess it, whatever we confess, whatever we speak, with that faith, with that belief, with that assurance, if we confess that is salvation. So through this faith, great grace, by witnessing this resurrection within us in the heart and confessing with our mouth, we are saved. Because great grace will be upon us and through which we are saved. And uh, we know through baptism, Romans 6 chapter, oh, with this faith, 
we believe in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we are baptized, the word of God says, Hallelujah, glory to God. The resurrection starts here in the faith and the belief and then continues to uh, the uh, 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 symbolical work of waters of baptism. Hallelujah, glory, glory to God. Or do you not know as many of us are baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. So that's when the resurrection work starts in our lives, personal lives, and it is, hallelujah, likeness of resurrection from where we have to keep growing in the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we read about the likeness of resurrection and it's the salvation experience and we keep moving from there. The next level is Hallelujah, glory to God. The power of resurrection, Apostle Paul speaks about it. Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Not only that, we are experiencing many people, they really don't experience. Um, traditionally, they take baptism and they do so lots of rituals that will not help people. But individually, we have to, hallelujah, meaningfully, hallelujah, glory to God, receive this resurrection experience, be benefited out of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then only we would be meaningful Christians, we would be living a meaningful life. On the legs, hallelujah, we will not, we cannot, people don't experience the resurrection or the touch of the Lord or the life of the Lord. They are not totally delivered or dead condition. Um, they are not totally delivered from the dead works of conscience. They are not delivered from the dead state of life spiritually. Praise be to God. May the Lord help us to uh, receive this experience each and every one. Oh, come firmly, hallelujah, steadfastly, believing, oh, hallelujah, fervently in our heart uh, that God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah, it has to dwell in us. Hallelujah. And by faith we are saved. Amen. The next thing is Philippians 3.10. Then Apostle Paul speaks about Hallelujah, glory to God. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. He says that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. First, likeness of His resurrection. Secondly, we have to move on from there. It is not sufficient just when we are united with the likeness of resurrection. Then we need to experience the power of experience, power of this resurrection in our daily lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, in our day-to-day -day activities, or in our regularly, continually, the power of resurrection should interact in our lives to revive us, to quicken us. Hallelujah. And he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of, of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Oh, hallelujah, persistent. Oh, hallelujah, move of Apostle Paul towards, hallelujah, resurrection from the dead. So he was so or oh, very convinced about the resurrection power of the Lord, of God the Almighty, worked in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I should know Jesus personally and also the power of his resurrection. We cannot be ignorant about the power of resurrection. We cannot be, uh, hallelujah, aliens to the power of the resurrection. We cannot be, hallelujah, glory to God, oh, hallelujah. Uh, we have, we should know that we are eligible, we are for us only, Jesus Christ, oh hallelujah, glory to God, oh, was brought out of the dead and for us to keep the power of resurrection because not only from sin, not only from trespasses, the power of resurrection liberates us, delivers us, 
brings us out from the dead, but also after coming out of all these things, we have to be liberated from the spirit of the world. We have to be liberated from the power of this world. We have to liberate to be liberated from the powers of darkness. We have to be liberated from the hallelujah, glory to God, principalities and powers as mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse uh, 10 onwards, then Apostle Paul writes so clearly, stating that, Hallelujah, glory to God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the voice of the devil. We need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, that is the power of His resurrection. 4 verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. After the uh, hallelujah glory to God, united together with the likeness of resurrection, when we are resurrected from the dead, from sins and trespasses, the whole hell or whole, whole, whole realm, the spiritual realm or satanic realm will be away to war against us. So what do we do? How do we tackle? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the e in the evil day, and having done all to stand. For this only we need the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and we are not going to be oh, uh, satisfied with the little anointing, little uh, power of God operating in us. It's not sufficient at all. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, we should receive power. And not only that, we have to keep seeking the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ for us to or withstand the wiles of the devil for us to fight against the war, for against the enemy and his army and to overcome the evil through the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony through the power of his resurrection. We have to overcome. Hallelujah, glory to God. So we need to be strengthened in the inner man, the word of God says in Ephesians again, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit or the power of resurrection because Romans 8, 11, the word of God speaks about who is that power of resurrection? Who is that power of resurrection? From where do we get it? Romans 8, 11. Then the word of God clearly states saying that, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give to you, will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. So the spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead should always dwell in us for us Hallelujah, to receive, keep receiving the power of resurrection and keep destroying the powers of, hallelujah, glory to God, mortality, powers of the body, the works of the flesh, oh, hallelujah, and the world. We need to be empowered within, with the power of spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He should really dwell in us richly. Hallelujah. We have to meditate on this power of resurrection and keep asking and yearning and thirsting and oh, hungering for the spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead or the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God through which we can do mighty, mighty things in the name of the Lord our God. So we need to really experience the power of God in our day-to-day -day lives and hallelujah, then we can easily overcome anything that comes on our way, that comes between us and the Lord, that needs to be hallelujah, glory to God, mortified within us, that needs to be dealt within us, hallelujah, we need the power of resurrection. With our own strength or with our own efforts, it's not going to help us, hallelujah, glory to God, our efforts, our 
hallelujah, fastings, pray and, and every other effort in the Lord without the power of resurrection oh, will not bring the result that we need to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul speaks in Ephesians chapter 1 again in the Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 I think. There he says, hallelujah, glory to God and what is the exceeding? See verse 18 onwards we can read. Hallelujah. The eyes of understanding, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, he prays that your eyes of understanding should be enlightened. You have to have the understanding, you have to have the knowledge about the power of resurrection. He says, eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his, inherit, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding great power? What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? Exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Hallelujah, it's a wonderful passage. He says, what does the exceeding greatness of his power towards us, we should know, for which we are understanding should be enlightened, brightened, hallelujah, sharpened. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the work that he worked, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised, according to his mighty power, according to the working of his mighty power, that is the power of resurrection, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So we need to really, 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 really apply our heart and mind and oh, hallelujah, spirit, Hallelujah, on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, hallelujah, from right from the depth of our heart, so that the whole hell will tremble before such a God child. Hallelujah. Oh, hell should tremble before you. Oh, instead of you trembling before the challenges that come on your way, instead of you trembling before the, oh, hallelujah, threatenings and hallelujah, all kinds of, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, oh, disbelief, all kinds of uh, weapons that the enemy uses against us, we should, with the power of the resurrection, oh, destroy the works of darkness, destroy the powers of darkness, destroy the weapons of the enemy. Hallelujah, glory to God, because of all our resurrection, it has to dwell in us, which we, so that, that's why Apostle Paul says, Christ in us, or the resurrected Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, praise be to God, thanks be to Jesus. So the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So when you keep, hallelujah, claiming, not only meditating, claiming the power of resurrection, or seeking the power of resurrection, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, asking God to fill you with this power, spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, dwell in me, dwell in me, dwell in me. He will quicken your martyr party. He will quicken your spirit. He will quicken your mind. He will renew you completely. Every kind of spiritual bondage will be broken down by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ to the power of his resurrection. Amen. Praise be to God. Glory be to Jesus. So we have to believe in the power of resurrection. We have to keep asking for the power of resurrection. We have to keep seeking for the spirit of power of resurrection. We have to keep operating the power of resurrection in and through our lives daily. Hallelujah, glory to God. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That is the power of resurrection. He is the God who calls things out of nothing. Hallelujah, glory to God. Abraham also believed that God 
was able to bring hallelujah children for him. Was chapter 4, I think. Abraham, hallelujah, Romans chapter 4. Then he, the word of God, Apostle Paul writes over here saying that, oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Verse 17, Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So everything from the heart, from the mind, with the power of resurrection, when we apply, we believe and we experience wonders and miracles in our lives. So, in the presence of whom, him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall be your descendants be. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a wonderful passage. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist has to rotate it. So this is what, hallelujah, God doesn't, everything prepared, he doesn't give it to us. Oh, hallelujah, everything in faith, Hallelujah, glory to God. Everything will be in a dead condition. Everything will be in a hopeless condition. Everything will be in a oh, condition where we don't see anything. We don't experience anything. We don't, hallelujah, receive anything. In such a condition only we need the power of resurrection. We need to speak. We need to act. We need to oh, operate. We need to exercise. Oh, with the power of resurrection, then only we can see the action of God. When who of God? When then only we shall, we shall see, oh hallelujah, God in action in our lives. Amen. Praise be to God. That's how God, hallelujah, wants us to, hallelujah, deal with Him. That's how God wants us to receive from Him. That's how God wants us to experience Him. That's why the Word of God also says, Oh, hallelujah, you shall overcome the world, even your faith. It is this faith that with that power of resurrection only, we can overcome the world and all that is in the world. Hallelujah. Without which, oh, we cannot oh, face all the challenges and all the oh, fury of the enemy. Oh, that comes against us every day, only through the power of resurrection, only through the power of resurrection, we can overcome them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thirdly, we'll turn to First Peter, first chapter. Thirdly, hope of resurrection. Oh, first we saw likeness of resurrection. Secondly, we saw um, power of resurrection. Thirdly, we're going to see First Peter, first chapter about the hope of resurrection, hope through resurrection. Um, first Peter, first chapter, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has, hallelujah, glory to God, begotten us. The born again experiences for what? To a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, for what? To an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. Who are kept by the power of God through faith, for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, here Peter says over here, saying that, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. What is the hope? Through the through, to a living hope, through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the hope? Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. The hope of being, hallelujah, with the Lord forever and ever. Eternal hope, eternal life, eternal kingdom. Living hope. All the hope is dead. The hope or trust we have put on anything else on this world is hopelessness, is dead. But the only living hope is 
through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, though we live here or die here, we will be forever with Him there. Hallelujah. In His kingdom. Amen. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. And so, this is a cert for us that through the resurrection power only we can attain all those things. And we know forever uh, that we are going to live with our Lord Jesus Christ. So the power of resurrection then comes hope of resurrection. And that only leads from one phase to another. First Corinthians chapter 15, then Apostle Paul states, about the power of resurrection, how we are quickened in our spirit and being transformed in the day of the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. Verse, praise the Lord, glory to Jesus. 45, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Life-giving spirit. Those who are dead, for them, life-giving spirit. So, how were the spiritual is not first. The natural, afterward, the spiritual. And then, verse 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption in corruption. Uh, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, in the last, at the last trumpet, oh, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. Also, Hallelujah, glory to God. This is the power, this is the hope of resurrection that we shall all be changed, we shall all be transformed. And um, Romans 8, there, uh, there he writes uh, in verse 29, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, whom he justified, these he also glorified, that is, oh, glorified as being taken into the glory. Only to the power of his resurrection, it is possible. We have already meditated many uh, verses on that. The whole world groans for us. Oh, uh, coming and this is this is speaking about Romans 8 23 redemption of our body redemption of our body is possible to the power of our resurrection as Jesus was raised from the dead received a glorified body so also we will be oh hallelujah through the power of the resurrection through the hope of resurrection our body will be resurrected hallelujah glory to God put on incorruption Hallelujah, glory to God, and the body will be redeemed uh, from the mortal body into the immortal body, immortality. And we have to believe in this hope of resurrection and wait upon the Lord and keep working on that uh, in our lives daily. And Second Corinthians 3rd chapter, last verse speaks about Hallelujah, glory to God, being transformed again. He says, Oh, last verse, 18th verse, but we all, uh, no, Second Corinthians 3rd chapter, 18th verse, but we all. 2 Corinthians 3rd chapter 18 to us, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are transformed from glory to glory into the same image, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord, previous verse, now the Lord is the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we have to move with this hope of resurrection, hope through resurrection. Hallelujah of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we are being born again. Oh, hallelujah, we have to be filled with the power of resurrection and with the hope through the 
resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, or we will be taken up in the midair. First Thessalonians chapter 4, Apostle Paul clearly speaks about it, saying that, Hallelujah, glory to God. Verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that though we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with a trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. May the Lord bless these words and really enrich our souls, open up our understanding and enlighten our understanding. Oh, hallelujah. From now on, really help the way the Spirit of the Lord help us to live a meaningful, powerful, oh, enriched with the power of resurrection. O oh, united together with the likeness of resurrection, enriched by the power of resurrection, move through the, O oh, hallelujah, glory to hope through the resur para, resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, hallelujah, help us stay in our lives until we reach His kingdom. May the Lord bless you all. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you, humble ourselves at your loving feet and pray that, Lord, we thank you that you have spoken to our lives this morning day lord on the day of resurrection we thank you for sending your only begotten son to die on our behalf suffer on our behalf and to uh, be buried and to be resurrected on the third day who seated at the right hand of the father and who's going to come back to take us back to you lord back and to be with you lord always forever we thank you for this blessed hope blessed experience help us to really experience the power of your resurrection be united to help us to be united with the likeness of your resurrection hallelujah glory to god by through faith and through the baptism through faith and to hallelujah love resurrected life from the sin trespasses and to withstand the wiles of the devil empower us with the power of resurrection or oh, for, for our progressive life in Christian uh, Christian world, Christian race. Hallelujah, glory to God and to move on with the hope of resurrection and one day be caught up in the air for to, for, to be with you forever. We give you all the glory. Bless each and everyone who are listening to this word. Rich, enrich their soul, spirit, body and mind and renew and captivate them by the power of your resurrection and hope. May the power of resurrection operate in our lives in a very powerful way. From now on, O Lord, we beg you, we earnestly seek for your power of resurrection, Lord. Oh, let your power take complete control of our lives, whole being, O Master. Give you all the glory, praises and honor, overcoming the powers of darkness and possessing the promises. We ask all these things in the most precious and matchless name of our Lord.